The Burevestnik cruise missile NATO codename SSCX-9 Skyfall is one of Russia's six strategic weapons, also known as super weapons that Russian President Vladimir Putin unveiled during a speech in 2018 at the Menez Central Exhibition Hall near the Kremlin. Burevestnik is an intercontinental-range nuclear-powered cruise missile with a booster engine and its warhead is presumably a high-yield thermonuclear charge. While conventional cruise missiles are limited in range, nuclear-powered cruise missiles can travel unlimited distances. Its main characteristics are low and steady flight, nuclear propulsion, unlimited flight range, penetration of missiles and air defense shields and unpredictable trajectory. The main propulsion system of this scary missile is a small nuclear reactor which powers an electric motor that drives a turbine. This engine takes an air at the front of the missile and compresses it. The nuclear reactor then heats the air and shoots it out of the back, driving a turbine on the way out. That turbine only starts to operate once the passing air is fast enough. Airflow prevents the reactor from overheating. If Burevestnik uses a turbojet engine, it will fly at less than the speed of sound. Burevestnik could also use a nuclear ramjet engine and be able to travel at supersonic speeds, probably twice the speed of sound. However, there are environmental and ecological impact as a result of radioactive exhaust because of the miniaturized nuclear power plant that propels the missile. The risks of a radiation leak would increase even further when the missile is airborne, traveling at high speeds. The nuclear reactor will be exposed to high pressure and temperature during supersonic flight, while the reactor will operate at extremely high temperatures. The internal temperature of the missile is about 2,500 degrees. Hence, it will take some pretty clever design work and materials to keep the missile from just melting in flight. Therefore, Burevestnik highly likely uses a nuclear-powered turbojet engine and travels at subsonic speeds. The propulsion system is activated only after the missile achieves sufficient speed following launch assisted by a rocket booster. In the 1950s, the U.S. military attempted to develop a nuclear-powered cruise missile called SLAM, supersonic low-altitude missile, that in theory could have flown in circles above the Pacific until receiving an order to attack. It could have then descended on the Soviet Union at three times the speed of sound while carrying multiple hydrogen bombs. SLAM could have ejected these bombs over various widely spread targets before crashing into its final destination. In practice, the U.S. government canceled the missile before its first flight test. There were at least two major obstacles. First, designing a nuclear reactor that could withstand extremely high temperatures without being too heavy or too large to become airborne is difficult. Second, finding a way to flight test the system safely is a challenge. U.S. scientists did develop a working nuclear ramjet engine. Although tests on the ground proved successful, radiation was a major problem. The reactor had no shielding to contain radiation, as that would have made the already locomotive-sized engine even larger. The engine used a direct cycle approach. Air was channeled directly through the reactor core to heat it up making the exhaust highly radioactive. Designed as a low-flying missile, SLAM would have been deafening, flattening, broiling and irradiating not only to Soviets, but also anyone in allied countries who happened to be in the path of the missile before ever dropping its nuclear payload. In 1964, the U.S. military determined there was no military need for the system and ended the project. While nuclear reactor technology has advanced since the 1960s and the Russian nuclear complex has experience in developing unique nuclear-powered systems, there are still engineering challenges to be overcome before Burevestnik can be realized. The difficulty of testing also remains. Any flight test likely ends with a damaged reactor emitting radiation. Crash-proofing the reactor would probably make the system too heavy to fly. The design of the U.S. thermal reactor is shown here. The fuel elements for the test reactors were made of the high-temperature ceramic beryllium oxide. This was mixed with enriched uranium dioxide in a homogeneous mixture with a small amount of zirconium dioxide for stabilization. Highly enriched uranium-235 over 90% was used. 
Each fuel element was a hollow hexagonal tube approximately 4 inches long, 0.3 inches across flats and had an inside diameter of 0.227 inches. These were stacked end-to-end -to, -end to provide the 50.7-inch length of heated air passage. There were 27,000 of these heated air flow channels and 465,000 individual fuel elements. Fuel loading is varied throughout the core to achieve a particular power profile. The design with these small unattached pieces was such that the problems of thermal stress in ceramics was minimized. Burevesnik uses either an open cycle type of reactor which is air-cooled or a closed cycle liquid metal cool type of reactor. Both concepts were explored by the U.S. in the late 50s and 60s and they found out that the open cycle air-cooled type would emit fairly significant fallout through the exhaust fumes while the liquid-cooled type would be too big and heavy to fit on a cruise missile. However, the Russians have most likely mastered the extreme miniaturization of liquid metal-cooled reactors. In a closed-cycle approach, the air does not come in direct contact with the reactor but is heated indirectly through a heat exchanger which reduces the radioactive exhaust. This approach, while more difficult to develop than the open-cycle approach, would also allow a more compact reactor. A liquid metal-cooled nuclear reactor or LMR is a type of nuclear reactor where the primary coolant is a liquid metal. Due to their high thermal conductivity, metal coolants remove heat effectively, enabling high power density. This makes them attractive in situations where size and weight are at a premium, like on ships, submarines, and nuclear-powered cruise missiles. The Soviet November-class submarine K-27 and all seven Alpha-class submarines used reactors cooled by lead bismuth eutectic and moderated with beryllium. The most successful test of Burevestnik was in November 2017. The missile flew little more than 20 miles before crashing into the sea. The nuclear refueling ship Serebryanka was dispatched to recover the possibly irradiated debris. The missile's length is 12 meters at launch and 9 meters in flight. The nose has the shape of an ellipse, 1 meter times 1.5 meters in size. Burevesnik is 1.5 to 2 times larger than the KH-101 and unlike the latter, its wings are located not at the bottom but at the top of the fuselage. Considering it carries a nuclear reactor on board, the missile must weigh several times greater than the KH-101. Ground-based transporter erector launcher vehicles, such as M's KT-7930 unique wheeled chassis with 8x8 configuration, are carriers for this missile. It is also possible that the Burevestnik missile can be based on warships. In conventional cruise missiles, there are certain design compromises. For example, it is difficult to achieve both high speed and low observability simultaneously in a conventional missile because, for high speed, a missile must carry a lot of fuel, making it larger and therefore easier to detect for enemy air defense radars. On the other hand, if a missile is to avoid detection by radar, compromises must be made with its fuel, warhead size, and weight. It results in a slower missile, low range, and is not very lethal. However, a nuclear-powered missile can be small in size to avoid detection, while at the same time being very fast with unlimited endurance. Also, unlimited range enables the missile to evade the enemy air defense systems by not following predictable trajectories. The missile has an endless ability to alter its course and strike the enemy from any direction to make the strike successful. The notional altitude of the Burevestnik is 50 to 100 meters throughout almost all of its flight. Maximizing the range of a conventionally powered cruise missile would require flying at medium altitude to optimize fuel consumption, therefore also increasing the range at which it could be detected by air defense radar. A very low altitude flight path would minimize this, as would the capacity to use circuitous routing to avoid known air defense locations. This new technology would theoretically allow it to bypass the United States National Missile Defense. Furthermore, the unlimited range of Burevestnik would allow the missile to be based anywhere in Russia and still be able to reach targets in the continental U.S. Western intelligence had been keeping tabs on Skyfall prior to President Putin's speech. About a dozen tests have been held since 2016, 
first at Kapustinyar near Volgograd, then the Pankovo test site on Yezny Island. Two tests were successful. Pentagon snooping of the latter by WC-135 whether reconnaissance planes used to measure radiation may have led to the program's relocation to Nyanoxa, which is distant from international airspace. While the exact status of the Burevestnik's progress is not known, reported claims from Russian sources indicate that this missile could become operational around 2025. These types of weapons ensure true second-strike capabilities the ability to retaliate after having absorbed a nuclear strike. These weapons also provide other significant strategic advantages. Undetectable delivery systems like Poseidon and Burevestnik provide the Russian military with plausible first-strike capabilities. These capabilities exist when a state can attack an opponent and take out their ability to strike back which is facilitated by systems that evade detection so as to reduce the chance of launch under attack. Burevestnik and Poseidon take aim at any U.S. confidence in missile defense. Though there is general agreement that U.S. missile defense is unable to promise protection from a nuclear attack, in a world with Burevestnik even those most convinced of the protection provided by missile defense must acknowledge that it is not infallible. This means that the U.S. has no choice but to accept that missile defense will not protect from a Russian strike, which in the eyes of Russia, increases deterrence. Thanks for your attention, and see you next time.